Welcome back to another episode. And guys, today we're talking American Psycho from 2000 starring Christian Bale. I know, guys. I know. I'm late to the party because I've never seen this film until this past weekend. I did finally sit down and watch it. And I got to say, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, I heard things over the years about this film. You know, just how crazy and over-the-top Christian Bale is. And I was like, you know what? Can he really be that over-the-top? I've seen Christian Bale, you know, in a number of films. We can just, you know, kind of just play the straightforward kind of guy. You know, almost like, you know, like Batman. You know, we're playing like Bruce Wayne. You know, kind of like not a lot of emotion. But I will say in this one, he's even have, he has a little bit of you know, comedic chops too. Whether or not they're intended to be funny, there are some funny scenes in this film because he's just crazy. He's over the top with his performance. Now, I'm sure, you know, most people have already seen this film. And there's, you know, one of the first scenes, one of the, you know, the big scenes that really kind of breaks things open is a scene where, you know, he puts on, a, you know, basically like a raincoat. And, you know, he's talk, you know he has uh, Jared Leto is at his apartment and he's talking to him and he puts on Huey Lewis in the news. And he just starts doing this little dance before he, you know, commits murder, basically. And, oh boy, does he commit murder. And it is just, it's crazy. You know, it makes, it, I'm, I'm chuckling. Like, here's this guy basically doing this, you know, th this horrible act. But I'm finding myself chuckling just because of how zany and crazy it is of what he's doing, you know, his performance of what he's doing. And that's another thing. Going back to say, you know, him playing Huey Lewis in the news. What about the soundtrack for this film? It takes place in the 80s, but holy crap, this is one of the best soundtracks I've heard from any film that I've watched in the, you know, in recent memory. I love the soundtrack. It's almost to the point where I think I might actually have to track this, you know, soundtrack down just to have it in a collect in my collection because it was great. It was every single song, you know, like I said, I grew up in the 80s, so this, you know, this was a soundtrack. This was a great great sound, not a bad song in this film. Now, of course, you know, Reese Witherspoon's in this as well. She, you know, she plays his girlfriend. And I tell you, there are certain elements to this film that, you know, you would think that she's going to play a bigger, a bigger role in the film, but she really doesn't. This is, this is straightforward. This is, this is all about Christian Bale. This is his film. This is his, like, a shining moment to really show what he can do. I've never, like I said, I wasn't sure what really to expect with this film, but he's got it down pat. I mean, him to play this kind of role, he has it down pat. He has the look, even just from the beginning of this film, when he's like, you know, when he's getting himself, you know, all cleaned up, ready to go to work, and he's talk, you know, he's like talking about all these different things, you know, what he does, you know, how he exfoliates his face, you know, with his, you know, puts his mask on. And I'm thinking the first thing that came to mind, guys, and and you guys. Leave me, a, leave me a comment. Tell me if you thought the same thing. It's almost like Macaulay Culkin with Home Alone when he's described, before he puts the aftershave on, it's like him describing, you know, the morning routine of getting ready. And that's the first thing that popped in mind. I, popped in the mind. I thought it was funny. And who knows, maybe the, you know, the creators of this film, the writers of this film kind of had that kind of image in mind. But right from the get-go, right from that point, that right, right from that part, I was like, what am I watching? Like, what am I getting into? So I'm like, and guys, on a scale, honestly though, on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give this like a seven, um, because like Christian Bale's performance is just so fantastic. He he really is, and like I said, maybe some spoilers here, guys, but it kind of it leaves you, you know, it definitely. So if you want to, so if, guys, if you haven't seen, like me, if you've taken this long, and you haven't seen this film, you might want to just pause the video, you know, pause this review, go watch the movie, and come back and finish it. Because this next part will be, you know, will be a bit of a spoiler. And that is basically what's real and what's not. What's all in Christian Bale's head and what is, you know, has actually happened. Because there are things that you could be like, okay, this is definitely, this is happening. You know, he's committing these crimes. But then it gets to a point of the film towards the end, like the last 15, 20 minutes of the film, where things really, like everything just amps up. The carnage just completely amps up in this film. And you really start thinking, like, wait a minute. You know, he's been getting away from, with all these things you know, throughout the duration of this film. But now he's kind of stepped over the line. And there's one scene that kind of like tips it, you know, tips the scales in that way of thinking, like, wait a minute. This is all in this guy's head. A lot of it is in his head. 
And that is a part at, at the ATM, at an ATM machine. And the ATM machine is basically, there's a message that comes across the screen that's asking him to do something. And, you know, I'm not going to say what it is because, you know, again, it's a kind of a little bit of a giveaway. But once you see that, you're kind of like, wait a minute, something, something's definitely off. Things might not be exactly what they seem. But again, it's definitely a film to check out. Um, I definitely see myself revisiting this film, you know, in the future. I think there could be more things that maybe I missed out. You know, watching the first time, but yeah, I was just taking in his performance. I, I, I can understand now why, you know, why for some people this is actually their favorite film. I, you know, again, for me, no. But again, seven out of ten is a solid score, and I, I'll watch it again, guys. I, I definitely will watch it again. You know, down the line. But I thought it was really good. His performance was fantastic, and. Like I said, there's just there's another there's another scene that comes to mind, and again, I don't want to spoil anything, guys. It's just him basically chasing this girl in this apartment building, him chasing down the hall after her. And if you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, one it's one of the best kill scenes I've ever seen in a film, hands down. But how he executes this scene, I. I my mouth was wide open. It left my jaw dropped because I thought it was just fantastic, you know, how how it was executed and, you know, come up with it. It was something straight out like Friday the 13th where you'd see a, this, this crazy kind of kill. And that's basically what they were able to execute with this one scene in the movie. But Christian Bale, he's it's one of the better performances that I've seen him put in. And again, it's an older film. I mean, 2000. So this is definitely, I mean, this is an older film, guys, now at this point. And I, you know, it's taken me this long, you know, to see it. I think one of the things, when, one of the reasons why I didn't go back and watch it right away, or why I, I never watched it right away in the first place, was I, I you know, I'm not the big, like, I'm thinking like Psycho with, um, you know, Anthony Perkins with, you know, with Norman Bates. And the first Psycho is great. And they kind of go downhill, you know, once you start getting, you know, further along the line in the series. And I kind of like thought that this was going to be like kind of, you know, pretty similar to that. And I was kind of like, ah, I don't know if I really want to get into that. You know, I'm really interested in seeing it. But now I'm happy. I'm happy to see it. And guys, it looks great. I mean, this gets to it right now. It looks great in 4K. It does. This is the unrated, uh, the uncut version of the film in 4K. You do have, you know, you have your Blu-ray disc as well included with this. Disc one, you have deleted scenes with optional director commentary. Um, you have audio commentary um, with the director, Mary Heron, uh, Heron, recorded in 2018. You also have American Psycho from book to screen. That's on the 4K disc only and the 80s downtown. Because like I said, this is definitely an 80s style film. And I, I, I love it, guys. I, and honestly, at first, I didn't even realize it was like based in the 80s. I, I didn't. But then once I started playing a lot of music and I started seeing how people were dressed, I was like, wait a minute. This is an 80s film. This definitely is based in the 80s. And like I say, guys, that freaking soundtrack is amazing. Incredibly amazing. And definitely, it's worth picking up, guys. Not expensive either. I think it's like 15 bucks to pick this up, which is not a bad price at all. I would definitely suggest doing just that. Definitely pick this up, guys. Do you, you know, you will not be disappointed. I think it's that, you know, if you're a Christian Bale fan, you're like a fan of, you know, of, you know, these kind of films. You're going to like it. You're absolutely, hands down, going to like it. And like I said, he's zany, man. He is, he is over the top. Over the top. And, you know, it was enjoyable. His performance was very, very enjoyable. 7 out of 10, guys. A solid score for American Psycho. First time checking it out. Guys, like, subscribe, and comment if you get the chance. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Take care.